When you hear the phrase, sacrifice of Jesus Christ, what do you see? Does your mind first see the grains of the wood on the cross? Do you imagine the sensation of a crown of thorns pressing to your head, or the weight of one's body being suspended on crucifixion hill? Do you try to grasp Jesus' suffering in those final moments amidst the mockery ringing out by those watching at his feet? Does your heart seize when you contemplate Jesus' final words, pleading for forgiveness on behalf of the crowd to his Father? Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice and your work on the cross. It's not conventional, but when I ponder the cross of Jesus Christ, my mind connects his sacrifice with the image of a lavish banquet. See, it was while eating dinner at a high-ranking Pharisee's house to which he was invited to celebrate the Shabbat or Sabbath meal that Jesus shared with those around him at the table a beautiful parable of humility. There, among the most prominent teachers and experts of Jewish law, all of whom were closely monitoring Jesus' words, where Jesus made a declaration. That relationship with the Father and the ongoing experience of His favor, love, heart, are available and open to everyone. And this is the parable of the wedding feast, the great banquet. And I'd like to start with a reading from Luke chapter 14, verse 15. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I just bought a field and I must go and see to it. Please excuse me. Another said, I just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. And still another said, I just got married, I cannot come. The servant came back and reported all this to his master. And the owner of the house became angry and he ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you have ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads, the country lanes, and compel all those to come in so that my house will be full. Do you see the parallels? Who's who? The master throwing the lavish banquet is God the Father. He celebrates his son, a concept so familiar because we see it lining the pages of the Word of God. The Father exalted Jesus to the highest place of authority because of Jesus' obedience to His will, even to death on a cross in our place. Second, those originally invited by the, by the Master who refused the invitation are none other than the Jews who were the first to receive Jesus and also to reject Him as their Messiah. See, Jesus was first given unto God's chosen people, the Jews, as shown in the Palm Sunday celebrations in Jerusalem. The same Jews who were quick to shout, Hosanna to the King, King Jesus, as Jesus rode past them on a donkey. They were in fact the same ones who a week later asked that Jesus take Barabbas, the prisoner's place on the cross while shouting, crucify Jesus, crucify him. And the third group of people are significant. See, they're the additions to the guest list, the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame, every person that the servants encountered on their travels. I belong to this grouping. This parable by Jesus is my savior foreshadowing our heavenly father's intentions for the world, for me, my invitation into the kingdom, my acceptance by the king, and for you too. Let's read Matthew's account of the same parable. This is found in Matthew 22, verses 1 to 10. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a vast wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, 
but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. And the rest seized the king's servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. When I hear both passages, I love the eagerness of the king or the master as he instructs his servants to bring in anyone they find. All those from the east and from the west, the lowly, the blind, the lame, the crippled, the good individuals, as well as those who were corrupt. See, God's love is for all to experience, to know, to fill that indefinable part in our hearts that's lonely and empty and cannot be filled. The retelling of this parable in Matthew highlights two big themes, and I just want to go through them quickly. First, it's rejection. And what's interesting to note here is that the king is refused not just once, but twice by the original guests. Despite our very real tendency to shake our heads at the Jews for their obstinance, their pride, are we not the same? Does God not pursue us in the face of our stubbornness? And this is ultimately, number two, a story of grace. Why would a being continually offer something even after being rejected? It highlights that the one offering sincerely desires that the guests do not miss out. God does not want anyone to miss out on what he's offering. He gave the choice to the Jews and then opened up that choice to anyone willing to believe in his son Jesus. And we see it demonstrated with the faith of a complete outsider. In Matthew chapter 8, something quite extraordinary happens. Jesus found the person to possess and demonstrate the greatest faith in all the land was not a Jew or of the Lord's chosen people, but someone totally unexpected, a Roman commander. This is Matthew 8, starting verse 5, the faith of the centurion. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion, a soldier, came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in all of Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Then Jesus said to the centurion, verse 13, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed right at that moment. What is there to say about Easter? except that the kingdom of heaven, God's kingdom, is for everyone and is all because of Jesus. If you need prayer, our one-on-one -on -one prayer room is open after this at 7.30. Really, we want to pray and partner with you to see God's fullness awaken in your life. You may not be lame or crippled or blind, but you may be feeling crippled in your spiritual life. Maybe you feel like you've been stumbling around a little blind in life, moving from just whatever pops up next. Come to the Lord and find refreshing, find direction. Maybe you're going through a hard time at home. Come and pray with us. Really take the step tonight towards a loving dad. 
we find all we need in the person of Jesus Christ. Take that step tonight. See you at 7.30 in our Zoom prayer after party.